It won't take long for you to realize that those dirty, lowly, little material things are far more important to you than the whole higher spirit of warfare. Suddenly, in the midst of a battle that seemed to be fought for legitimate spiritual needs, you feel that in reality you have been illegally forced into a simple debate between yourself and pain yourself and the need to live, yourself and the desire to live, that everything is there, that if you simply die, there is no longer any battle, no homeland, no right, no reason, no victory, no defeat, and so you are simply made to strive painfully towards nothingness. There is no epic, however glorious it may be, that can put respect for its glory before the needs of the digestive tract. He who has constructed the epic with the suffering of his body knows that in those so-called moments of glory, in truth, baseness occupies the sky. Under the iron of Verdun, the soldiers hold. For a place that I know we hold, because the gendarmes prevent us from leaving. They place posts until the middle of the battle, in the support trenches, above the Tavan tunnel. If we want to get out of there, we need an exit ticket. Idiotic, but spot on. Not idiotic. Terrible. At the beginning of the battle, a few soldiers on soup duty still manage to get through the artillery barrage. When they get here, they have to search their cartridge belts and show the gendarme the tickets signed by the captain. The heroism of the official communique must be carefully controlled here. We can well say that if we remain on this battlefield, it is because we are carefully prevented from escaping it. Finally, we are there. We stay there. So we fight. We give the impression of fierce attackers. In reality, we flee from all sides. We are between the battery of the hospital, a small fort, and the fort of Vaux, which we have to reconquer. This has been going on for 10 days. Every day, at the battery of the hospital, between two rows of bags on the ground, we execute without judgment, on the spot, those who are deemed and labeled deserters. We can't get off the battlefield, so now we hide there. We dig a hole, we bury ourselves, we stay there. If they find you, they drag you to the battery, and between two rows of bag on the ground, they blow your brains out. Soon it will be necessary to have each man accompanied by a gendarme. The general says, they're holding. They, they are holding, but I, the general, would not venture to suppress the gendarmes or to advise indulgence to this colonel of the 52nd Infantry who is in the hospital battery. This has been going on for 15 days. For the past eight days, the soldiers on soup chores have not come back. They leave in the evening, in the dark of night, and it's over. They melt like sugar and coffee. Not one man has returned. They have all been killed, absolutely all of them, every time, every day, without exception. We're not going there anymore. We're hungry. We're thirsty. We see there a dead man lying on the ground, rotten and full of flies, but still surrounded by cans and balls of bread passed through wire. We are waiting for the bombardment to calm down. We crawl up to him. We detach the bread balls from his body. We take the full cans. Other cans have been pierced by the bullets. The bread is soft. You only have to cut off the piece that was touching the body. This is what we do all day long. It has now been going on for 25 days. For a long time, there have been no more of these pantry corpses. We eat anything. I chew a plastic strap. Towards the evening, a friend arrived with a rat. One skin, the flesh is white as paper. But with my piece in my hand, I still wait for the dark night before eating.
We have an opportunity for tomorrow. A machine gun that arrived earlier as reinforcement was crushed with its four servants 20 meters behind us. Later on, we will go and get the handbags of these four men. They were coming from the battery. They must have brought food for them. But hopefully the men in the hole on our right do not get there before us. They must have also watched from inside their hole. We observe. The important thing is that the four are dead. They are. So much the better. This has been going on for 30 days. This is the great battle of Verdun. The whole world has its eyes fixed on us. And we have a terrible problem. To win? To resist? To hold on? To do our duty? No. To do our necessities. Outside, it's an iron deluge. It's very simple. One shell of each caliber falls per minute and per square meter. We are nine survivors in a hole. It's not a shelter, but the 40 centimeters of earth and log on our heads are before our eyes a kind of visor against the horror. Nothing in the world will get us out of there. But what we have eaten, what we currently eat, wakes up several times a day in our belly. We have to do our necessities. The first one of us that it took stepped out. For two days he has been there, three meters from us, dead with his pants down. We make in paper and we throw it, at, throw it there in front of us. We even used old letters that we were keeping. There are nine of us in a space where normally we could barely hold three tight. We are a little tighter. Our legs and arms are tangled. When we want to bend our knee, we all have to make it the gesture that will allow it. The earth in our shelter shakes around us all the time. The gravel, dust, and splinters keep blowing into the one side that is open to the outside. Whoever is near this kind of door has his face and hands scratched with a thousand little scratches. In the long run, we no longer hear the bursting of shells. We only hear the incoming mass shock. It is an uninterrupted hammering. We've been in this spot for five days without moving. None of us have any more paper. We put our defections in our handbag and throw them out. You have to untangle your arms from the other arms and take off your pants and do it in the handbag that is leaning on a friend's belly. When we finish, we pass the contents to the one in front who passes it to the other who throws it out. It's the seventh day. The Battle of Verdun continues. More and more heroes. We still don't get out of our hole. There are only eight of us left. The one who was in front of the door was killed by a large splinter that came right through it, cut his throat, and bled him out. We tried to plug the door with his body. We did the right thing. A kind of low shot has specialized for the last few hours on this on this piece of area is recoiling sharpnel down on us <clears throat> is raining recoil sharpnel down on us we can hear them banging into the body blocking the door although he bled like a pig with his carotid artery open he still bleeds from every one of those wounds he received after his death i forgot to say but for more that for more than 10 days none of us has had a single gun cartridge, knife, or bayonet. But we have more and more this terrible need that does not cease, that tears us apart, especially since we have been trying to swallow small balls of mud to appease the hunger. And also because last night it rained, and as we had not drank for four days, we licked the rain water that was running through the logs and also the rain that came from outside and ran down to our house from underneath the corpse that was blocking the door. We do in our hand. Dysentery runs through our fingers. We can't even manage to throw it out. Those at the bottom wipe their hands in the dirt next to them. The three who are near the door wipe their hands on the dead man's clothes. That's how we realized that we were making blood. Thick, but absolutely glowing blood. Beautiful. It has been four days now that this corpse has been clogging the door. And it's August 9th. And we can see that it is rotting. 
this one soldier had done in his right hand. He put his left hand to his behind. He pulled it out full of his fresh blood. In the course of the day, we all realized in turn that we are that we were excreting blood. So we do it right there, right underneath us. I said that we have not had weapons for a long time, but we all have our bottle in in a belt of our equipment because we are at all times devoured by a fiery thirst and from time to time we drink our urine. This is the admirable, the glorious battle of Verdun. Two years later, at the Chemin des Dames, we revolted. At the time, I survived alone of the last eight. For, for similar in ignominies. Not at all for great motives, not at all against war, not at all to give peace to the earth, not at all for great slogans, simply because we were tired of shitting in our hands and drinking our own piss, simply because at the bottom of the army, the individual has touched utter foulness. Jean Giono.